All right, welcome back. Here's the workout for task two. Let's take a quick look at what task two wants. In task two, we want to record the students who are going and whether they have paid. So input and store the names of the students who have asked to go on the trip up to the maximum number allowed. Input and store whether each student has paid. Enable printouts to be produced to show students who have not paid and those who have paid. So again, we're going to go to Python. I'm going to open a new file. I don't need the old one. It's completely independent. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we want to create or declare an array. Okay. Task two to input names of students going on the trip and whether or not they have paid. We're going to declare an array called names array. Okay. Now the size is of 45. Okay. Because it's an array, first we put the name, which is names array, and it's equal to, we have to open some square brackets. Okay. Now because it's going to be string, it's an array of all string, all names. I'm going to put a string, you know, an empty string, which is just two quotation marks inside the brackets. And I'm going to multiply that by 45, okay? Because I know I have a maximum, you know, I need to have an array size. I'm declaring an array size of 45. All right, so I've declared now 45 elements, and they are all simply an empty string. I need another array to keep track of who's paid. So I'm going to have a paid array. This time, it's either yes or no, true or false. Either the student true paid or false, you know, the student didn't pay. So I'm going to just initialize it all to false, okay, multiplied by 45. So now I have two arrays. One of them is initialized to the null, like to zero characters, but they're all string. And one of them is initialized, you know, to 45, false, 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 false. It's time to get started to fill in the array. Okay. Now, to fill in an array, we use a for loop. Okay. So for count in range 0 to 45, 0, 45, well, how are we filling it up? The teacher is inputting the names, right? So names array, I'm going to open a square brackets of count, is equal to input, enter the student's name. Now let's take a look at what we've done here. Okay. We are saying names array zero is equal to enter the student's name. Then she's going to enter a name, press enter, then it's going to go to the next one. Names array element number one. You know, element one, enter the student's name. Names array element two, element three, onwards until we reach, you know, element 45. But in the for loop, it will start from, it will go from zero to 44. So here she's input the names. We also want to input whether or not the students have paid. So paid array of count is equal to input, input, enter true if the student paid. Actually, true has to have a capital T to be recognized in Python. True if the student paid or false if the student did not pay. So 45 times we're going to enter names and we're going to enter true or false whether or not they paid. Okay, now what happens is that you know, all of our tasks need to be validated. So before we enter the paid, let's validate the name. Let's say if, let's, I think a simple validation is the length check. So we can say, you know, while names array counts, so while a particular element, now while the length of that element, so we're going to use the length function, length. While the length of that element 
is greater than 20 characters, so it's too long of a name. Let's say, you know, print that name is too long. Please enter a name less than or equal to 20 letters. Okay, so we've printed a message, an error message. And then, of course, we're going to take another input. So names array count is equal to input. The person should input the name again. Okay, that's all in the while loop. All right, so as long as the name is too long, we're going to keep outputting an error message and we're going to keep taking an input to try again. So once the name is fine, we're also going to input whether or not, you know, true or false, whether or not they paid. Now, let's say I don't have, you know, all 45 students are going, like maybe only 23 are going. So we could use an if function and we could tell the teacher if names array of count. So if the teacher has entered the name equal equal stop. Okay, so if she typed in stop, that means, okay, break. Get out of this for loop, we're done. All right, so that's it for our for loop. At the end of this loop, we're going to have entered, you know, the amount of the names of the students going and whether or not they paid. Now, the second part of task two is to output the students who paid and to output the list of students who didn't pay. So to do that, we're going to say for, we're going to have a for loop as well, for in count, count in range 0 to 45, if paid array of count, so if it's equal to true, then we want to print, okay, this, the name of the student. So names array of count. So we could also put a message that here are the students who paid. Because it's equal to true. So for count in range 0 to 45, if the paid array of count equals true, print their name of that count. Okay. Once that's done, we can also print here are the students who did not pay. Okay. And in, as well, of course, we need a for loop so we can navigate through the array and check element by element, you know, which one is equal to false. If paid array of count is equal, equal false, now print names array of count. Let's run this program, okay? Let's see, uh, let's enter, you know, a few names and see how it goes. Task two again, short. This is the short version of task two. All right, so I'm gonna enter some names, Alice. Okay, remember to use quotes because it's a string. I'm gonna say true. Enter Bob. Okay, false, he didn't pay. I don't need quotes for false because it's Boolean. All right, I'm gonna say hey, Carl and Carl paid, true and Dawn, false, a couple more names, Edward, true, okay? And then I'm going to top type stop because I want to break out of that for loop. Okay. So let's see the names of those who paid. So the names of those who paid are Alice and Carl and Edward. And the students who didn't pay are Bob and Don. So everything's working fine, except it's including stop. All right. And in the, if you'd like to know the details of how to get rid of that part, you know, I could, maybe I'll make another video or you can ask me how to, you know, to fix that. But um, more or less, the program is working. It's initializing 
um, two arrays, and the arrays are keeping track of one arrays 